Hey guys, Arnav here, back with another YouTube video. In today's video, we're only going to be focusing on electron configuration because I am now going to be making videos that only focus on specific topics in each unit. And yeah, thanks for your support. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let's get into the video. Here and let's get started with the video. So first up, I wanted to keep up my tradition of giving Japanese song recs because I'm quite big on J-pop. And the three song recs for today are Flamingo by Kenshi Yonezu, Tabun by Yosobi, and Sixth Sense by Ryo. My personal favorite out of these three is Tabun, but the other two are also quite like good. So yeah, let's move on to the actual chemistry now. So the first slide I have is regarding what electron configuration is. And it's a method that's used to notate the electrons that a specific element has in an orderly fashion. Now, if we look at this periodic table, each element has a atomic number that's been assigned to it, right? And that atomic number also reflects the number of electrons that the given element has. However, it's boring to just know that carbon has like six electrons or hydrogen has one. Instead, scientists came up with a method to actually order these electrons in a fashion that could be observed under a microscope. So the notation that is used is the exact same to what is observed under a microscope is the point I'm trying to make. So in order to actually learn how to notate the um, electron configuration, we need to first differentiate between shells and subshells because that's a big part of this. So first up, I just wanted to go over this diagram because this is how electrons are actually um, arranged around the nucleus of any atom. So as you can see, you have the central nucleus and you have rings of electrons going around the um, nucleus. So these rings or concentric circles are known as shells or energy levels. And the way you notate them is that as you move out, you write N equals one, which would be the first ring or energy level, N equals two, which would be the second and etc. and so on. So that's what a shell is. Now moving on to subshells. If you take one of these rings and zoom in real close, you will actually notice that there are multiple parts to each ring. And these are known as subshells or orbitals. Now we really focus on these subshells when we're learning how to notate um, electrons in an electron configuration. So there are four main types of subshells. The first one is the S subshell, which can hold a maximum of two electrons. Then we have the P subshell, which can hold a maximum of six, the D subshell with a max of 10, and then the F subshell with a max of 14. Now you might be wondering, how does this actually matter? And that's what we're gonna cover on the next slide. Moving on to the specific order of the subshells in electron configuration, there are two main um, ways to approach this. The first one's for beginners, and the second one is for intermediates, right? Now the first one is this diagram on the left, where basically I have written down all the different subshells and I have drawn arrows through them to represent the um, order in which you're going to go through the subshells. So you're gonna start out by completely filling the 1s subshell, and then if necessary, move on and fill out the 2s subshell completely. Then go to the 2p subshell, to the 3s, to the 3p, and so on and so forth. So just follow these arrows, um, and using the direction they take you in, you will be able to correctly fill out the subshells in a legitimate order. Now the second one is the one on the right. And for this, I want you to assume that each element on the periodic table represents one electron, okay? Just assume that for the sake of this explanation. So the table is um, arranged in an order where separate um, subshells are located in separate parts of the periodic table. So all the S subshells tend to be located in these two columns, hence it's called the S block. All the P subshells in this part of the table, all the D subshells here, and all the F subshells here. So let's um, try and fill out the subshells using this table. Again, we are assuming, just for the sake of this explanation, that each element is one electron. So we're gonna start out by filling the 1s electron, and that's gonna be done by filling out using an electron from here and an electron from here. So the 1s electron, or rather the 1s subshell is completely full, right? Now we move on to the 2s subshell, which is here. And upon taking these two electrons, we fill out the 2s subshell as well. Next up, we have the 2p, which we will fill successfully using these six electrons. And as you can see, as we start to move across the periodic table, we see a clear trend where specific subshells are located in specific parts of the periodic table. So with experience 
and as you kind of um, look at the periodic table a lot, you will just naturally be able to tell the order of the subshells as they are located in specific parts of the table. Now, the main takeaways here are that um, go in an ascending order. And what I mean by that is for each specific subshell, once you have written out the electron configuration, make sure that um, it's going in an ascending order because that is confirming that um, you're going from a low energy level to a high energy level, which makes sense, right? Because as you keep adding electrons, you're adding more and more shells. Therefore, you're going outward and increasing in energy level. The next one's believe in yourself, guys, because um, I know it can be really hard, and I personally found this to be quite hard of a topic in AP Chem, but yeah, after practice and going to my AT a lot, I, I learned how to do it, and I believe that you guys can do great on it as well. Now let's try actually writing out the electron configuration. Now I want you guys to just watch here, I don't expect you to try this, as I have examples queued up on the next slide. So now first we're going to write the electron configuration of helium. Now we know helium has an atomic number of two, right? And therefore it has a total of two electrons. And since we know the 1s subshell comes first, we're just going to fill out the 1s subshell fully since it can hold a max of two electrons, which satisfies the total number of electrons that helium has, which is two. So the electron configuration for helium is simply 1s2. Also, if you guys want the um, like arrow diagram for this, since it's your first time electron configuration, I have linked it below the video and I would highly recommend like having that on one side of the screen and solving or rather looking at these questions alongside with me, okay? Next up, we have oxygen. Now oxygen has an atomic number of eight, which means we want a total of eight electrons. So we start off by filling out the 1s subshell fully then we move on to filling out the 2s subshell fully. So now we have four electrons. And then we fill out the um, 2p subshell with only four electrons because we don't want 10 electrons, which would occur if we filled out fully. We only want eight electrons. So we're gonna do the four we had before from the 1s and 2s plus four. And that gives us eight electrons, which matches oxygen's atomic number and therefore is its electron configuration. Now, another good way to check if um, your electron configuration is right is all of these um, exponents here, they represent how many electrons you're actually placing in each subshell. And if you add them all up and that is equal to the atomic number of the element you're looking at, you are most likely correct because the atomic number is also representative of the electrons it has, right? And if the electrons over there match the ones in your electron configuration, you're right. Now let's do magnesium. Magnesium has an atomic number of 12, therefore 12 electrons. So once again, we're going to fill out the 1s and 2s subshells fully, giving us four electrons. And we're also going to fill out the p subshell fully because we want to go beyond 10 electrons, right? Here we have 12 electrons. Once we fill out the 2p subshell completely, we have 10 electrons in total. See, two plus two plus six, 10 electrons. And then since we want two more, we're going to fill out the 3s subshell with two more electrons. And then we have 2 plus 2, 4, plus 6, 10, plus 2, 12, 12 total electrons. And that is the electron configuration of magnesium. Now I want you guys to try, and I would highly recommend using the um, flowchart below if it's your first time. Let's do the electron configuration of neon. So neon has 10 um, electrons, since that's its atomic number. and to start off, we're going to fill out the 1s subshell fully, which gives us two electrons. Then we'll fill out the 2s subshell fully, which gives us four. And then finally, we're also going to put six electrons in the 2p subshell to come up with a grand total of 10 electrons, which is how many electrons Neon has, and is therefore the correct electron configuration. Now let's do the same for cobalt. Now, as you can see, cobalt is really long, and I'll talk about how to deal with this later, right? So with cobalt having atomic number of 27, we know it has 27 electrons, right? So we're going to fill out the 1s subshell, the 2s, the 2p, the 3s, the 3p, the 4s, and then in the 3d subshell, we're only going to put seven electrons instead of completely filling it up. And now let's double check if you're right. Let's just add up all the exponents. So we got two plus two, four, plus six, 10, plus two, 12, plus six, 18, plus two, 20, 
plus 7, 27, which is the um, total number of electrons that cobalt has and is therefore um, a good um, piece of proof to say that this electron configuration is indeed correct. Now, going back to what I said before, this does seem quite long, right? Like, I don't want to be the dude who just is sitting there for like 20 seconds just writing all this down when I could be working on some other MCQ or other parts of the FRQ rather. So there is a way to deal with that and we're going to be discussing it on the next slide. So this magic method that allows you to write less is known as the noble gas configuration. It is the same as the electron configuration, but it's a shortened version of it, right? So when we are writing out the noble gas con um, configuration, what you basically do is you find noble gas, you put it in square brackets, and then you write the electron configuration after that. So one very important point to remember is that um, whenever you're finding the noble gas, it has to be the closest noble gas that is found before the element you're looking at. So for example, let's say we have aluminum. The closest noble gas before aluminum is neon. And then let's say we have germanium. The closest noble gas before germanium is argon. So always remember, closest noble gas before in square brackets and then complete the electron configuration. Well, let's do some practice. Let's take oxygen, for example. That is the regular um, electron configuration of oxygen. But if we find the closest noble gas that um, exists before oxygen, that's going to be helium, right? And we're basically going to put helium in square brackets and we're going to finish the electron configuration after that. So we're going to write the electron configura uh, configuration starting at lithium. So with helium in square brackets, now with lithium, we are in the 2s subshell, which we'll fill out fully. So 2s2 and then 2p4. So we basically just replaced a part of the electron configuration uh, with a noble gas, right? And even though this might not seem like a lot for something that has as little electrons as oxygen, sometimes you're asked to write the electron configuration of like cesium, which is like here. That's going to take you at least like a minute, which is a lot of time to lose on the AP exam. So an easier way would just to be uh, identifying xenon and then writing the electron configuration after, right? Now I'm going to give you guys some examples. Let's do the same for cobalt. Here, um, we have cobalt's regular um, electron configuration. So the first step with writing noble gas configurations is finding the closest noble gas before. So cobalt is um, found, <clears throat> excuse me, cobalt is found over here. This is cobalt, oh my god, <laughs> it took quite a while. So topic number 27, we have cobalt. The closest noble gas before that is argon. So we're going to put argon in square brackets and we're going to write the electron configuration after that. So we have argon in square brackets and once we move on to the next element, you will see that we are in the 1, 2, 3, 4 as subshell. Now I'm using the method of like identifying subshells from the periodic table. But again, I stress that if you guys want to use the arrow chart thing, I would really recommend using it as of now. So yeah, we have argon and after that we have the 4s subshell. So we're going to fill out completely and then we're going to add seven more electrons in the 3d subshell, which is this subshell right here until we reach co um, cobalt. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, cobalt. Yes. Quickly, before I end the video, I wanted to make you guys aware of another curveball that College Board just likes to throw at you because they like to give us a difficult time. And that's basically when they give you a ion, which is basically an element with a charge on it. Now, here's my tip with these. If you get an ion with a positive charge on it, just reduce the number of electrons by that much. So let's say you get a um, lithium ion with a plus one charge. So normally lithium has three electrons, right? But that plus one charge contradicts one of the previously present electrons. So you're going to write the electron configuration of lithium, but with two electrons instead. Now the same applies to when the ions have a negative charge. Let's say lithium again has a minus one charge in this case. Now, since you're adding negative charge on top, write the electron configuration of lithium with four electrons instead of three as you gain more charge. So yeah, that's just something I wanted to tell you guys about. All right, we have reached the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like the content, I would really appreciate it if you subscribed or liked or even commented on the video. I am always open to help you guys out. 
as I quite enjoy making these videos and really enjoy concepts from AP Chemistry. Um, yeah, thank you for your time and peace.